What are you selling in the U.S.? Where did you get your value and, and what industries are you exiting now? Well, in the U.S., uh, in financial services, we did a whole series of banks, community banks, sort of three to ten billion, rolled up into five different platforms. We sold two of them already. We have a third one, Bank of Cascades, that's being acquired by First Interstate. Uh, we've had a whole series of mortgage companies uh, servicing and, and origination, and again, we've sold, I think, three of the four we had. Uh, but we're, we're still seeing a lot of opportunity, but mainly in Europe. Yes. Yeah, so, so as regards the U.S., you're, you're sort of getting out of financial services. You think that that's an area that's been picked over? Yeah. Well, the valuations have come up, obviously, with deregulation being talked about a lot, with higher interest rate, that really helps banks. And so the valuations have come back to more normal levels. And so it's time for us to start thinking about exits. What do you see in terms of the political landscape over the coming 12 months? Are you more concerned than you were about, say, Black Swan events? Well, uh, there's a lot of uncertainty out there. There's no doubt about it. I mean, you know, we have a new president here, the Brexit in the UK. There's, I think this year there's going to be at least four elections in, in Europe, maybe even five if, if Italy does it. So Germany, France. So there's a lot of uncertainty out there. On the other hand, the economies are recovering. We are seeing uh, better growth. Uh, unemployment's coming down in the U.S. and in Europe. So there, there are our opportunities out there. So this time last year, we would have described this as a low growth, low interest rate world. Where are we in that cycle? Are interest rates beginning to increase, or is it just purely in the United States? Well, I think we're starting to see interest rate increase, certainly in the U.S., but in, in some of the European countries as well, uh, France and Italy and some of the ones that people are a little more worried about, their interest rates are starting to move up. Uh, and, but the Germans are still very low, and obviously the Swiss are still very low. You said there's lots of PE money chasing deals. Just before we leave financial services, are you still interested in mortgage originators here in the U.S.? What do you see for the future of housing? Well, I think housing will be strong. Uh, the millennials will start to buy houses at some point, we hope. Uh, certainly my kids have. They're a little older than uh, millennials. <laughs> but, uh, and, uh, you know, I, so uh, housing, I think, will, will, will continue to grow. I think the real issue will be mortgage originations because we've had a, a refinancing boom with lower interest rates and now that mortgage rates have moved up we're going to see less of refinancings but more people purchasing uh, houses and getting mortgages for that so I, I, I would think mortgages will probably shrink by about originations by 20 percent this year but still be reasonably strong so there may be opportunities in that space yes Okay, let's move to Europe then. You've obviously been involved in Europe for a while. You were one of the first investors in some of the most distressed debt in, in right. Europe, uh, converting it to equity for the most part. Then Brexit happened. Yeah. Now, what does Europe look like? Well, Europe uh, is still some opportunities there, uh, but you got to be careful. Uh, you know, obviously, we were very successful in the Bank of Ireland. Uh, we have a uh, mezzanine real estate fund in Ireland as well, which is doing very well. We have investments in, uh, we just sold our last uh, piece of virgin money in the UK that grew really dramatically in under five years from a couple hundred million to 33 billion pounds. Uh, so we've seen some good opportunities there. We're continuing to look in Spain, uh, the UK, there's some opportunities still, uh, certainly in Ireland. And, and some Scandinavia. So there, there are pockets of opportunity uh, in lots of different places. Now, are you talking commercial real estate in these areas or financial services? When you say mezzanine, 60 percent to 80 percent? Oh, yeah, that's, that was real estate uh, loans, basically, mezzanine real estate mm -hmm. in Ireland. Uh, and we also have a joint funds with uh, Invesco and real estate that's been very active in Europe as well. You're betting on Ireland more than, say, Germany when it comes to commercial real estate or even the Netherlands, other places that have been mentioned as potential hubs for banks and so forth? Yeah, well, we, we like, we spent a lot of time in Ireland and we've done reasonably well there and uh, we have a really good team there that it's our, we partner with uh, and uh, we think it's, it's, it's going to have some ups and downs from Brexit. Certainly some of their exports to the UK are going to suffer uh, with where the pound is now. Uh, but on the other hand, I think there'll be some financial services moving into Dublin, uh, and uh, we, that should really help our real estate. You've been looking around Europe at, at banks and financial services as you do. You still haven't touched Italy? Uh, we've looked at Italy. Uh, we've looked at several banks there. We haven't really gotten comfortable yet with their 
uh, legal system and uh, you know the bank regulatory system. Uh, but uh, it, it's a possibility. I, you know, we're, as I said, we looked at Spain. Uh, we're very actively looking at Spain at the moment. Uh, we have an investment in Greece and, and Cyprus as well. 